Well, look at that. Some good news already. This is Rise of the Kasai, sequel to The Mark of Kree. I highly suggest you familiarize yourself with the original game, via whatever means you prefer, because this game doesn't seem to even attempt to stand on its own. Also, the original game is phenomenal, and I expect that this game will spoil the hell out of it for you. So this is your last chance to turn back and enjoy the Mark of Kree the way it was intended. Gather round, all of you who would listen. I have a tale to tell. A story of warriors and kings. A saga of dark magic. A legend of high adventure. Long ago, a series of dark spells were created with the power to enslave our world. Evil magic with no purpose but that of destruction. But before these spells could be invoked, they were stolen and broken apart. Dark and powerful. These words were not easily destroyed, and so were hidden about the world, branded onto the souls of innocents, cursing their lines for eternity. Men are mortal, and time can be the enemy of fear. All too soon we forget how the bee will sting and the fire will burn. As time passed, these families forgot what the marks were for, dismissing the ancient warnings about these words of power. They were merely stories, tales from a long past time. But an evil sect, known only as the Kasai, knew nothing of time, and with infinite patience they waited until their spells were rediscovered. That appears to be a recap of the major themes from the Mark of Kree, with a bit more information. Clearly featured the original narrator, Kayona Young, so that was neat to see. A lot of the voice cast has been changed, but I know Kuzo and Rao remain the same. That's most of what matters. It also demonstrated the new art style of Rise of the Kasai. One group stood alone in the battle against evil, known only as the Rakus. They watched over and protected those marked with the spells. Their ranks were filled with the greatest and most honorable warriors, who gave up everything for the cause of defending those marked. Many legends tell of the bravery of the Rakus, and of their eternal struggle with the Kasai. Like these stories, mine begins long ago. But unlike any other that I know of, it also begins with the hero's death. I remember it all as if it were a dream. I, Kuzo, scout and chronicler to the great Rao Utu, flying over a white landscape through snow-filled skies, being drawn by a voice calling my name. And more cutscenes! Okay, now I think I can talk. I'm actually pretty invested in this story, so I'm gonna try not to interrupt the cutscenes with commentary. And that said, I am trying to play this live and blind, because I haven't played this game more than 14 minutes. I've looked up my previous save file. So yeah, this is a pretty fresh experience for me. Um, these options here seem to be replacing the Sage from the original game, which is excellent. The Sage was kind of glitched out and required a lot of loading screens to use appropriately. It was cool that they tried to keep all the bonus features in-universe, but this is a improvement, no question. So we've got any number of options at our disposal. We're obviously going to start off with the levels. 
Taburoku. The first being Taburoku. We've been there before in the Mark of Kree. Now let's check out what it has to offer for us. Kuzo, it is I, Oracle to the Three Kingdoms, and I am in need of your service. Spirit Guide, something has happened that neither the gods nor I could foresee. Your master, Ra'utu, is dead. His death is unexpected and has thrown the heavens into chaos. The gods are calling on you, Spirit Guide, to visit the past and relive critical periods that led up to his death. We do not know when or how this happened, Kuzo. All we know is that Rao was betrayed. We were betrayed. Three destinies are intertwined with Rao's Kuzo. His sister Tati, and the Rakus warriors, Bamusu and Grizz. Travel with them all once more, rewalk their paths, and discover what has happened. All I know is that it will end in a decision that shapes the future of mankind. Let us travel back to when Bamusu and Grizz were mighty warriors fighting for the Rakus. Let us travel twenty years into your past, back to Tapu Roku and the pursuit of a traitor. So that's an actually pretty interesting setup that nonetheless infuriates me because it kills off Rao before we have even begun the game. Delightful. So we have a brand new character called Grizz. Never met him before in the original game, but we can play as Baumusu. So that's awesome. We're gonna do that right now. Many years before I served Rao, I traveled the land in the charge of Baumusu, the great and noble warrior. I remember journeying with him and his mentor Grizz on urgent Rakus business. We were to hunt down a fugitive to Rakus turned traitor called Maybisi before he located the final parts to the Mark of Kree. It seems like load times are still pretty long. I had to cut them down severely in the let's play of the original game. So they highly recommend that we play the game. Hmm. Not sure I like Baumusu's voice. And I certainly don't like those tips, which I can't check out right now, but that's fine. Should at least be able to turn them off. Whole bunch more options, actually. But there go the tips. Here come the subtitles. And I don't want friendly damage. God, that seems like it would make this game unplayable. These guys are dropping like flies. So Bao's, Baumusu's basic attack combo is named after himself, just like Rao's was. Rao's good old Rao-Usu combo. I can't imagine anyone who didn't play the original would have any understanding what's going on right now, or even what they should be doing. So it seems like this game has limited its appeal far beyond even that of the Mark of Kree. I can only imagine that the developers had a death wish when they were going into this thing. The developers, by the way, are not Sony San Diego, the guys who made the Mark of Kree, but they are called Bottle Rocket Entertainment, which is a company founded by former members of Sony San Diego. However, I've checked the crew list, and it is not identical to that 
of the Mark of Kree. In fact, I don't think anyone is in the same position that they were in in the Mark of Kree. Certainly not the same director, same writers, none of that. Even Jeff Merghart, the original game's artist, has been reduced to concept art for this game. So it's not a completely new team. They do have some experience developing a Mark of Kree game. However, it's also not exactly the same team as before. One hit kills on absolutely every enemy. It's a pretty ridiculous first level. Yeah, I would have just slaughtered Grizz there with my friendly fire. So I'm glad that's not active. Let's see. We've got seemingly all but one of uh, Baumus's weapons here. For some reason, he's not using his signature axe that he bequeathed to Rao at the end of the game. Hornblowers, but who cares? Just killing everybody. Hey, Tuku. I saw on the menu that there are multiple Tukus in this level. Okay, hold for applause. Grizz cleaned that guy's clock pretty handily. Oh, and Grind impaled him. Nice. I really do not like Bamusu's new voice actor. Maybe he'll grow on me. Oh, is that a perch? Yes. Oh, okay. Thought for a second it was a completely useless perch. Are they facing me? I can't quite tell. I think Grizz is going into stealth mode. Nope. Quite the opposite. Completely blew my cover. Roto! Got the same Usu Rutu as uh, Routed. Oh, there goes that guy's head. <laughs> that was pretty cool. The colors are kind of washed out. I think it's because this is supposed to be a flashback. Hopefully, it's not the whole game like this. Because the original game was very colorful and it gave it a lot of charm. I recognize those statues. And I recognize that mechanic. Very nice. I should probably check out the challenges at some point. Let's see. Uh, defend uh, six attacks. 40 focused kills, and the Tukus. I haven't had any need to block because everyone dies so quickly. It might actually be difficult to block enemies because my partner is slaughtering everybody before they can move. I may or may not be able to complete the challenges on video. If not, I will be certain to do them off screen. Get all the rewards. Surely there's some interesting material they've got hidden behind unlockable gates. <laughs> Clearly, Bamusu taught Rao all of his axe combos. Let's see what else we got. Yeah, let's get a fair fight going. Yeah. 
barely a fair fight. Come on, you jerk, swing at me. Thank you. Ha! <laughs> That's new. Oh, here comes Grizz to kill everybody. <laughs> this uh, two-character gimmick is sort of the whole thing that makes this game different from the original. In fact, the instruction manual for Rise of the Kasai, 90% identical to that of the Mark of Kree. So I expect to be able to play this game without much instruction needed, no tutorials whatsoever. Okay, another loading screen. I thought maybe... As soon as we oh, landed on mind. the shores of Tapuroku, we knew something was amiss. We had been warned that Maybisi had wealth and could hire mercenaries. But these men were no bought swords. They fought with too much passion, too much hatred. Only upon closer inspection did Grizz discover their real identity. They were outlawed members of an ancient cult known only as the Kasai. So, yeah, the title alone indicates something bad is going to happen in this game. Because the Kasai are the well-known villains. Grizz, killing everybody again. You do things your way, and I'll do them my way. I'll wait patiently for this gentleman to turn his back. He's coming right for me, though. He's gonna cross the bridge, looks like. Hey, Grizz's methods are proving much more effective than mine. By God, I'm gonna get at least one stealth kill. That's pretty awesome. Bamusu seems to just throw everyone around like a sack of sand. All for naught. They spotted me immediately, Hornblower or no. Right, I'm supposed to be blocking. Okay. Blood effects have been improved somewhat. <laughs> this game came out in a post-manhunt world, so I believe brutality will indicate as much. <laughs> See, that should have killed everybody. Had them all nicely in range. They all managed to block the way out of it. There was an alternate path behind me. I wonder what could be there. Hmm. Rao or Grizz can dual wield. So that's interesting. We've seen that we'll get to play as Tati at some point. Grizz uh, basically is the same as Tati for all gameplay purposes, as far as I can tell. I believe they have unique animations between them. Hopefully. Oh, I mentioned the instruction manual for the Mark of Kree. In the corner of every page of that instruction manual is a little drawing of Rao sneaking up on a gentleman and bludgeoning him to death with the hilt of his sword. And if you flip through them quickly enough, 
They animate. It's a little flip book. Even the instruction manual for the Mark of Kree is beautifully animated. Seemed like, yeah, this mace was much more effective. The instruction manual lists all the official names for all these weapons. They all seem to be based on uh, real life weapons. They've got complicated names that I've never heard before. Batmosu drives a spiked flail through someone's guts. Cause why not? Armored enemies already. Whoa, cool. Parts of this game are already pretty great. Can't say I'm thrilled about the changes to the visual aesthetic, and voice acting, and storyline, and all that. But maybe they'll uh, come around. I assume they have a bigger plan in mind. I've read some aspects of the story, very few, but they seem very interesting. Really all comes down to the writing they can pull it off or not. An unfortunate side effect of being able to drive a blunt weapon through a person's torso is that if you hit a piece of wood with it, it also gets stuck. Oh, is that Grizz going nuts over there? That it is. I'm supposed to be keeping him alive, but uh, he's pretty much saving the day on his own. <laughs> Hot damn. Oh, man. Okay, I guess I'm saving my progress. Save over my old file. This should be good for an episode, I think. Looking forward to more.